Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. And for the beginning of the new month here, I wanted to go back to Mono White Humans, which I've just really, really enjoyed this deck. Absolutely love it. And wanted to see if I could um, bring anything new to it. So I wanted to kind of run it through a standard event. And before I get into it, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing this channel with a friend of yours who might also like it. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting me. It really does mean the world to me. I really appreciate you guys, so thank you. Um, I will have a deck list in the description, both on moxfield.com as well as untapped.gg. And then in addition, I will also have a link to my playlist. So if you want to see some of my other videos, they'll be there in the description as well. Um, I also want to thank my members. Thank you guys so much for supporting me and my channel. And it's a huge way to help support the channel if it's something that you want to consider doing. You will get um, access, early access to my videos for as little as $1.99 a month. So if you do want to become a member, here's exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in. So this is pretty close to the list of mono white humans that I was running um, about a month ago and a month or two ago, I should say. And it's definitely a list that I think works well for a number of reasons. Um, you have some of just the best answers in your sort of top end. You've got four copies of Adeline Respond at Cathar, which is just a nightmare for mono red and is a very powerful threat against pretty much any deck. You've got four copies of Brutal Cathar, which gives you um, a form of removal, which is very, very sorely needed in this type of deck. And then you also have four copies of Night Errant of Eos, which is kind of a staple auto include in any aggressive deck that has white mana. Um, this, <laughs> this card is just so good and if you're not playing it you're just behind um, in any kind of aggro creature deck uh, that can support it so your top end you know kind of one of the big things is having four toughness is super important against uh, mono red and some of the other decks so being able to just kind of brick wall your opponent um, is part of the reason why i chose these creatures specifically um for the two drop slot, we've got four copies of Copper Coat Vanguard, which pumps the entire team. Four copies of Intrepid Adversary, which does the same thing and is also a 3 1 lifelinker. And then three copies of Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, which is a very, very powerful effect. And since we're only running four spells in the entire deck, um, it basically is sort of one sided against the opponent. So it's a fantastic card. So yeah, basically I'm very happy where the two drops are at. I, I don't think, um, for a little while I tried Grand Abolisher and Grand Abolisher is or can be a great card against um, like Azorius Control. Part of the problem is though, is that you have to be on the play to be able to drop it before they can get their first counter spell in. So it kind of, you know, it's not as good on the draw. Um, and it's just not that great in a lot of other matchups. So that's part of the reason why I'm favoring just sort of the all around useful Thalia and then um, Adversary here for both the lifelink and the pump and then Copper Coat for like the, the ward protection and the pump. So pretty happy with the two drops. For the one drop slot, I used to be running, um, I think three copies of Warden of the Inner Sky and Warden is really good in a deck like Boros Convoked because there's so many different things for it to 
to use in order to um, tap three things to to scry and give it a plus one plus one counter but you you kind of have a couple you just you don't have quite as many permanents and so it's just not at its best here and hopeful initiate does have the nice benefit of being able to deal with temporary lockdown which is like one of the huge um, difficult things for this deck in addition there's just a lot of creatures that can grow hopeful initiate you've got um, adversary thalia adeline brutal cathar knight Aaron of eos recruitment officer which can all help grow the initiate so i decided to go with initiate instead we have four copies of Lunark Veteran just for the obligatory life gain, and then four copies of Recruitment Officer, which pairs extremely well with Brutal Cathar, so that on the turns that you're waiting to flip Cathar, you can have something to do with your mana. Um, one copy of Skrell Defector Might, just because it gives you another angle of attack to be able to push through those last couple points. It's also really important to help protect super important threats like Brutal Cathar, um, Adeline, Coppercoat Vanguards, and so on and so forth. So it's just very useful, I think, to have one copy. Um, I could potentially see running two copies, but I think that we don't want to stray too far from the Mono Humans theme just because there's you know, some benefit to be able to give that pump. Um, and then also, you know, in games where I had like two copies of Skrelv, it's just not where you want to be because if you don't have like enough threats to actually close out the game, it can be an issue. So I think right now I'm happy with a singleton. And then four copies of March of Other Worldly Light. This is basically your sort of just do everything fix it card that is just absolutely fantastic against Mono Red when they've got Slick Shot Show Off, um, other just insane, you know, dangerous threats. Um, it's great against the gruel pump deck where they kind of try to go all in on like the picnic ruiner um, it's just fantastic it just does everything you want it to do so yeah once i added this in i've never looked back um, i would absolutely stand by a full play set of this card um, and then you've also got for another piece of removal you have four copies of Iganjo seat of the empire and i think since this deck runs 22 lands um, you really do have room for a full play set. And it's going to look strange. I know most decks only run like one or two copies of Iganjo, but because you have 22 lands, you really do have the extra space in the room to run a full play set. And so, you know, most of the time it's going to be, you know, potentially land for you, but you really will have, you know, the ability to have enough land with 22 lands so that you can effectively use the extra copies of this as removal, which is great. Um, you also have four copies of Cavern of Souls, which is super important now because a lot of the Azorius like, control decks are running like 10 plus counters main deck. So like this card is absolutely insane. Um, and running Human Tribal is just so important for that reason. And then you've got three copies of Mishra's Foundry just to kind of help push those last couple points and get, you know, squeak out some more value out of your lands. So, yeah, I feel pretty pretty good about where this deck is at. This is very close to, you know, what my build was um, two months ago, but I think with changing out Warden of the Inner Sky with Hopeful Initiate uh, and a Singleton Skrelv is going to be pretty good. Um, one other card that I did consider in the past, and you... I could certainly see a potential argument for running is like a singleton copy of Lava Spur Boots, just because giving haste to a white deck is really powerful. So I don't know exactly what I would cut or how I'd fit it in, but that is one other consideration. And it definitely can absolutely steal games from Azorius Control. So it's a consideration. I don't know that it's that I need it right now, but I could see possibly adding it. Okay, all that said, let's go ahead and jump into a standard event. Uh, 
All right, let's jump into the first game. All right, let's jump into the first game. I think out of all the decks right now in Standard, this is definitely the deck that I feel most comfortable with. I have um, a lot of reps with it just kind of over the last month or two. And uh, yeah, I really like its potential. Great hand, gonna keep. There's a lot of nuance of uh, when to hold March, when to use it, uh, depending on the matchup you're up against. <clears throat> All right, so up against green, let's just push damage here and get the uh, Vanguard going. Since we've got three land, there's a decent chance we can get Adversary going um, with four mana. If we were worried about potential blockers, maybe you could play like Adversary there and then use Vanguard to pump. But yeah, against the deck with up the Beanstalk, this looks like you know it could be Domain. We definitely want to just push as much damage as quickly as possible. So here the question is if we want to go like Officer plus Adversary, Next turn we could pump. I mean, it's also possible we draw into something else next turn where we want to use like March to deal with like a threat. I think I'm probably just going to double spell here. Even though we could potentially pump next turn, just having like the adversary on the table feels pretty good. This way we also get to use like recruitment officer if we need to. Yeah, it looks like it is Domain or something sort of similar to it. So here the question is if we want to use March on their Spelunking. Like if they have a tap land in, in hand and they have the ability to do like board wipe, I. Okay, I guess they're just dead, but that was a consideration for the march. Want to know? So unfortunately, we only have one land here. Uh, we do have stuff to do for the first two turns, and we don't have any three drops in hand, so this is potentially one you could consider keeping. <sighs> this one's kind of on the fence. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Mulgain if we can avoid it, and I think there's a decent chance that this, this hand could get there. So I think I am going to keep it, actually. Um, I would not fault you for throwing this hand back. I think if I just had, like, one one-drop even, I would certainly throw it back. Since we have stuff to do on, like, turns one and two, and these are all two drops instead of three drops, makes me feel a little better about it. But this could certainly be just an incorrect keep. Against Mono Red, though, I mean, or, or Boros Convoke. This does feel decent, at least, having access to Veteran. Here, I think we're actually also happy to trade, just to, like, lower the number of creatures they have going, so they have less likely chance of getting into, like, Night Aaron of Eos. 
And since we haven't got one, I think we're happy to make that trade. Okay, so now it looks like they just have uh, reinforcements. Which, again, we're happy to trade for half a card here just to kind of slow them down. Yeah, there's the reinforcements. A lot about this is just kind of just buying time. And here, like we're so far from extra land, we're actually happy to make this trade also. Again, just trying to control how quickly the speed of the game is going. Okay, well there's March. Unfortunately, that's not what we're looking for. This was definitely a sketchy keep, so. Definitely paying for it now. Well, with 22 land in the deck, like, there's a decent chance we draw into one. <clears throat> Might be a little bit too little too late. Guess let's run out the Thalia. If they have like case, we're super dead. Yeah, the Wardens are really good right now. So I think the play here is we use March mid-combat just to see which warden they go with. Hopefully we can get them to like tap a bunch of guys into it and buy some more time. Um, yeah, I think that's what we're doing. Night off the top is pretty good. I mean, they have a couple scries here, so like, Warden is super good for them right now. Yeah, unfortunately, they're, they're very wisely working on the second Warden here, which makes sense.
Okay, so now... They don't have quite enough to just kill us in the air. They can pump this up to four, five, six, but not lethal yet. So I think we just go for adversary here. Looking super dead, but I guess we'll see. Yeah, that's almost surely gonna do it. Yeah, so even if we block these two, we're taking three, six, eight. Yeah, we're super dead. I think that hand, like, you know, had a chance of getting there with 22 lands in the deck. Um, I'm not sure it was completely wrong. It definitely didn't pan out, but uh, I think, like, if you're looking at those marginal hands... You want to have like at least two, potentially to three turns of things you can do with one mana. And then if you don't have like all three drops, that's great also. Um, ideally you want to have like a two lander or better, but I don't know. It is what it is. Here we're going to hold the cavern as long as we can, just so they can... Um, you know, we can get to a point where they're going to put up counter mana and then we can blow them out with the, counter, with the cavern. Definitely want to play your adversary right away, just get as much damage in as quickly as possible. And because we do have four uh, marches... We're less worried about the super big blowout for uh, temporary lockdown. Now, since we've got um, for sure no counters here, I think we do want to go for the Adeline first. Um, Night Errant is great, but getting Adeline going early can be really good also. Yeah, you know, uh, man, Adeline is definitely can be more advantageous i'm always kind of unsure which one to run out first i guess i'll go with the knight errant this time I, I don't know what's specifically better here i guess because we know we can get knight errant going even if they do like a board wipe we can refill so that feels pretty good that was a great pickup there Surprised they didn't feel the ruin. Yeah, given the depopulate, I'm I'm much happier that we played the Knight Errant over the Adeline. Now I think we just run out um, Thalia plus Copper Coat since we have March ready in case they have uh, lockdown. We could again go for the Knight Errant play just to sort of expand, but I think I want to get Adeline going so we can set up like a Knight Errant for three at least the following turn. I guess, actually, let's start with Veteran. Otherwise, I suppose we could use March on their Restless Anchorage if they try to block. Hmm, that's actually a decent, like, stone raining them is pretty great if we can do that. I don't know that they're going to go for it. I think there's enough of a chance that it's worth maybe trying to set up. Yeah, I think let's, let's, let's try it and see what they do. Could also just go for Night Errant here. They won't be able to do... Another full board wipe unless they have another depopulate. I think we just want to start shoving, though. And not just put everything out there.
Because now we'll run out the Phantom. And again, if they have Lockdown, we've got March ready for it. Yeah, there's the Lockdown. So I think we'll probably just... The question is, do we want to do this now while they're tapped out? Since March is easily counterable. I think we might want to just do it now. Like, it feels really good to do it end of turn so they can't respond to it. But there's a decent chance they just counter our march. Do we go for the veteran here? Like if they have board wipe, we're left with two guys. I think we hold the veteran just to be kind of a bit conservative here. Now I think we just push since they can only activate one anchorage. I guess if they, um, depending how they tap their mana, actually no, they, they won't be able to activate a second anchorage. So I think now we just push, see what they do. If they try to use anchorage, we can march it. The other consideration is saving march in case they draw into like another um, lockdown. But I think since they're at 14, we can do like half their life. This feels pretty good. Just staying aggressive. If they have Emperor here, it's pretty rough. But I think they go for this play. Yeah, this feels right. So now we can march for zero. And even if they have uh, no more lives, we can still pay for it. So here the question is, do we go for another creature? Like if they, if they have board wipe, it sucks. But I think that like, if they have like one piece of removal, they can like buy another turn, which I don't like. And if it's like depopulate or something like that, I think we can maybe sneak out the veteran. This gives us just like a little bit more, like I don't wanna do Brutal Cathar here. So we have like some sort of refill. Now they need like at least one piece of removal. Um, could have Emperor, could have like another Get Lost or March. I'm a little bit like, I don't feel great about sending Vanguard in because it's a pretty easy way if they've got Emperor to just like save a bunch of damage. So maybe we just push with like Thalia and the other two. Yeah, I, I don't really know here. Maybe we just full send. Because like if they like block and eat this, they're still taking seven, they need another piece of removal. I think we, yeah, maybe we go for it. They're low enough. Like we could easily get blown out here, but yeah, they had it. Okay, so they have Emperor. So we could like Skrelv plus Knight here. Maybe it's better to like just Knight or just do these two. 
they're at five. I think we want to save Brutal Cathar for the token they're going to make next turn. Skrelv feels pretty good. Yeah, you know, I think I'm going to go for it. Let's go for Skrelv into Knight. You have a decent chance of hitting a little bit. And even if they have board wipe here, I mean, it's bad, but like... They just go for like a token plus try to block with Anchorage. We can use Brokathar on their token. Okay, well that's super good news. Yeah, now we've got March plus Brokathar. This is pretty great. So we'll play Brutal. Deal with the token. Hide binder. Sure. So I wonder if we respond to Tide binder by removing it. I guess we don't have enough mana to do that, unfortunately, but. Um, that's okay. Now we can use March to get rid of token. If we send the knight through and they're out of gas, I think that's lethal. I guess let's, let's see if we can march their token first. Nice, got there. Whew. All right, two and one. Yeah, it feels really good to be able to beat blue-white control. It's just like such a pitched fight the entire way, but you know, you always wanna to try to like hold something back like an ace in the hole if you can. Um, a really good card there to hold back is like a, a single copy of um, recruitment officer so you can like use that to keep getting card advantage but i've always been kind of miffed over like whether or not to to go for the adeline versus the um uh the knight errant early because they almost certainly have removal for it so maybe it's better to go for like the the knight errant play to refill okay this hand looks good I will say that Mono White Humans is probably my favorite deck in the format right now. It's just like, suits my personality really well of like, just like what I'm comfortable running, like aggressive, but it still has like some control elements and can do well against other aggro decks. Here, I think we just want to go Thalia. Um, we could always like March later. Like we want to try to save March for their, um, the slick shot show off if at all possible. Thalia is like super awkward for them. Okay, there's the show off. So we could go for like March plus Officer. Um, we will have to pitch a card. I'd prefer not to. So I think I'd rather just Brutal Cathar their show off. And then if they deal with that, then March marched again. But we're already taxing their mana quite a bit. So this feels totally fine. Like I fully expect them to kill the Brutal Cathar, but it'll like take them some time and give us a little bit of a chance to kind of get things going.
Certainly never blocking. So I kind of think that like holding up March and the Foundry feels pretty good here. That way we can flip through Cathar and then possibly like reset at the next turn. Trying to decide if we hold Thalia back or not here. Like we can push, like we could also go on the offensive here and like push for eight and then um, hold back March if they try to alpha strike, but I, I feel like flipping Brutal Cathar here feels pretty good. So maybe let's just hedge and just push for four. I could also see like an argument for like pushing just two damage here. But like we do want to like kind of close out the game also. Okay, but now they're trying to get ancestral anger going. I think here we want to go ahead and march in response. They don't get the card draw. Now it's pretty unlikely they can push for lethal this turn, yeah. So yeah, not blocking. So unfortunately we can't quite push lethal here, but that's okay. Trying to decide if we want to have Brutal Cathar flip again, because that could be one way we lose if they get rid of it and can, like, can push. Um, getting Adeline going, though, feels pretty good, so... Yeah, the problem is, even if we push for... I guess we'd have to push for eight and then let it flip. And then if they have anything off the top, we could just lose. Because then they wouldn't be able to flip it, and like flipping it would, or getting rid of it would kill them. So, <sighs> yeah, I guess let's go for Adelina. Like leaving ourselves totally open doesn't feel great either, though. So maybe let's just go this route. Like, if they have, like, shock into Monstrous Rage, we are just dead. Yeah. Three and one. Okay, opening hand looks great. Most likely this is gonna eat play with fire, but that's fine. Yep.
Okay, so they've got the show off, but didn't want to play it. I guess our best defense against that is Thalia. Let's just get Adeline going. But yeah, we're going to need to draw into a piece of removal. We've got 12 pieces of removal in the deck with four marches, uh, four Brutal Cathars, and four um, Iganjos. So we've got stuff to do. Decent chance to draw it. Yeah, so I think we just have to drop to six here. It's not ideal, but like we don't want to just give away our Adeline. Okay, that was fantastic. And then we can go into Knight Errant, which feels pretty good. Get the attack in first. The extra life off the, the token and then push for knight errant that was a fantastic draw yeah so code breakers how much do they have here i guess they could almost flip it Okay, the Aganjo is fantastic. So let's just go for Copper Coat holding up Aganjo. And that should be lights out. Yeah. Four and one. What I love about the deck is that it's really resilient and it has like between the 12 pieces of pseudo removal with like the lands and the, the marches and the brutal cathars, it feels like you have a decent chance of drawing a potential answer. Yeah, this hand looks great. And especially with 22 lands, like I can't stress enough how important it is to be running four copies of Iganjo. Like you really do want all four. I think we just want Intrepid Adversary here just to try to keep pace with any kind of nonsense. Yeah, 
Yeah, did, did not expect them to be willing to trade there, but would have been happy if they would. Um, so here we'll float the mana, do the Brutal Cathar game, and then we can like go into Copper Coat next turn if we need to. So you tap the Aganjo first, then you play the new one, Legend Rule, and then we'll get the third mana here for the Brutal Cathar. And as much as I don't like Sharp-Eyed Rookie, I mean, we have another Brutal Cathar here, but Glissa is just such a problem. And this way we can start pushing. That was a good one. Um, yeah, Sentinel's pretty brutal here. Could go for Copper Coat. We could also just let this flip and then you hold up March. Thing is, we really want to get rid of this Sentinel because it just keeps making tokens, which is super annoying. Like, the Sharp Ed Rookie is also a problem, but. The Sentinel is super annoying. So I think maybe like before it gets to combat, we can use March to deal with our Sentinel. I think that's probably the move. I think we probably toss the Thalia here. Uh, it's... I guess I could see an argument for throwing the the adversary since we don't have another any more land coming. Um, Thalia is pretty good, especially with the taxing ability. Um, adversary could be important later. Yeah, I guess I could get, see getting rid of adversary here. Oof, another sentinel is brutal. <laughs> play Thalia just to make this more a little bit more expensive for the go for the throat um, could also play Brutal Cathar and try to set up like a double spell turn I mean there's really sort of no good answer here I think we probably play the Brutal Cathar Yeah, Sentinel's such a problem. Ah, uh, there's just no good answer here. Like, do we want a two for one ourselves for the Sentinel? Not really, but we can't just keep taking damage. I guess we could triple block the Sentinel. And then they just use the removal on this brute and then I guess they could only kill one of these. So that's actually, maybe that's the move. Mm. 
Yeah, I think we triple block. This way they need two pieces of removal. Probably lose the Thalia here. Okay, that was a nice pickup. Now we can go ahead and flip them. Question now is do we want to have it flip? Um, maybe not. Because they're just going to get it back with go for the throat. Kind of want them to use go for the throat and pay the life. Yeah, I think we just sit. Guess we could do another triple block here um, if we want. Do we want to trade Vanguard plus Brute? Actually, I guess if we triple block, they can only kill one again. So I think we're happy with this. Unfortunately, they got the Glissa back. And Cottage is pretty brutal. They have any removal here, it's like so bad for us. But I think we definitely want to keep Officer around, perhaps, to be able to start drawing into more stuff. Um, Copper Coat is great, but their Sharp Eyed Rookies are trouble too. So I could see like trying to trade one for one here. Problem is, if they've got removal, like we just get blown out. But we're kind of on the back foot, so I think this is maybe the maybe the move. Okay, Adeline feels pretty good. 
Gonna take some damage here. Yeah, definitely on the back foot with the Glissa and the they've got the cottage. This is just this is kind of a rough matchup to be honest. Pillage the Bongo, man. Yeah, we're looking super dead here. But I think we can at least get an attack in. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Okay, yeah, it's looking pretty rough for our heroes. I think it's just about over except for the tears. Yeah, these sentinels are such a problem. Just so much value. gonna do it all right four and two fighting to stay alive can we make it to the end This hand looks pretty good. Okay, so up against Boris Convoke, you do always want to check for the uh, Gleeful Demolition. I've certainly lost games where I didn't respect this, so instead of playing Officer here, we're going to hold March and see if they've got it. Okay, no red sources, so maybe they have it and just didn't draw it. Now we can't really afford to hold it up with Thalia going. So I think we're just going to start playing out our hand. But usually if they have like access to the mana, they want to like play it right away. Sneaky, maybe they waited an extra turn. Yep, they definitely played around it. <sighs> yeah, that's tough. I didn't really want to wait another turn with kind of impending beatdown, so kudos to them. They outplayed us there. Um, I think we just go for Knight Errant here. I guess we could also go for Adeline, but like we don't really have like super great attacks. Recruiter is pretty good for sure. We're not dead, but it's it's not looking good.
Kind of want to get Adversary going, but I think we just go for Adeline since we get essentially two life out of it. Yeah, and I think we want to keep Veteran around if possible. Oof, War Leader's Call is pretty good. And I guess, yeah, that's that's it, unfortunately. So maybe we should have waited an extra turn with March. Yeah, that could have been a misplay. Well, so it goes. So four and three. Um, I feel like I, I definitely like there was a game where I kept a one lander, which is probably wrong. Um, that's on me. This game here, maybe they deked us out on the Gleeful Demolition. I mean, Gleeful Demolition usually does decide the game if you can get it or not. So maybe we should have waited another turn. Hard to say. Like, they didn't play the land, so maybe they were just being kind of being coy, like knowing the possibility of us having March. But at any rate, thanks, guys, for watching. Um, still ended up going, yeah, four wins, so enough to pick up some prizes here. And we will see you in the next one.